There are economic reasons behind racism and police brutality. Check this out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. This is uh, Professor Richard Wolf, by the way. It's brilliant. A new study just came out from uh, Citigroup, from uh, two of their economists, Dana Peterson and uh, Catherine Mann. And what they found was that since the year 2000, the U.S. gross domestic product, the U.S. GDP, has lost $16 trillion dollars purely and exclusively as a result of anti-black discrimination in the United States. Uh, this is a quote from their, from their study. The analysis in the report that follows shows that if four key racial gaps for blacks, wages, education, housing, and investment, had been closed 20 years ago, $16 trillion could have been added to the U.S. economy. If the gaps were closed today, $5 trillion could be added to the U.S. GDP over the next five years. On the line with us is Professor Richard Wolff, the economist, co-founder of Democracy at Work, author of numerous books. Uh, his latest, The Sickness is the Symptom. When a uh, system, excuse me, when capitalism fails to save us from pandemics or itself, democracy at work info, the website, and rdwolf with two fs dot com, and you can tweet him at Prof Wolf. Uh, Professor Wolf, your thoughts on the economics of police brutality and racism in the United States? Well, you know, it's an old topic. I'm very glad that the Citibank has produced that uh, study. Uh, that we've lost trillions of dollars by the abusive treatment of the African-American community should not be very basic surprise or news, given what we all know and can see every day. I have a complex reaction to the police. I think that the police are put in an impossible position. That's not an excuse for their excessive use of force. That is horrific, but it, again, is hardly surprising when you have a social problem as long as we have had, as unresolved as we have had, and then you stick in the police people as if they could mediate or solve the problem, you're going to get pretty much what we have. Again, no excuse for it, but it is a problem that should have been addressed so that we're not uh, looking at Breonna Taylor or George Floyd or any of the other. Let me, however, so would, would another way of saying that uh, be to say that if you're going to have a repressive system, if you're going to intentionally construct a system, as we have done in the United States, right up to this day, it has uh, diminished in degrees over the years, obviously, but right up to this day, if you're going to have a system that systematically exploits, oppresses, and basically steals from a, a certain class of people, you're going to have to have a police state to enforce that. And when you create the police state, it's not the individual police who are responsible for the police state. They're the ones executing it. it, it it's like, you know, the, the German soldiers in World War II, uh, you know, weren't the, weren't the bad guys, it was Hitler. Is that the kind of argument that you're making here? Uh, absolutely, and that's why it, it shouldn't surprise anyone. I mean, it's disgusting, it's awful, there is no excuse. It's a blot on the history of, of the United States and of the capitalist system. But you know, I don't want to beat the dead horse, but I do want to stress that there's a reason for this. There's a reason why not just the United States with African Americans, but, for example, many European countries with immigrants from North Africa or the Middle East. In Germany, it's Turkish people. In France, it's North Africans and, and people from the Arab parts of the world. Capitalism as a system, as we know, is periodically crashing every four to seven years, just like we've had three now in the first 20 years of this century. And there's a terrible problem in capitalism. If everybody, all of us, you, Tom, me, if we were all worried that every four to seven years we had a major risk of losing our jobs and losing our incomes, how in the world would we live our lives? How could we mortgage, you know, buy a home on time and not be terrified that four years or six years from now we'd lose our job, couldn't pay the mortgage, etc.? So what every capitalism has done is recognized that if they didn't exempt ensure uh, the mass of their people that they wouldn't be bounced out every four to seven years. The only way to do that, that would be the only way to survive as a capitalism, would be to assign the horrible role of shock absorber 
uh, last hired, first fired, to some subgroup, some port portion. In Europe, as I say, it's immigrants. Here in the United States, it's been immigrants from Mexico, but it has been the African-American community, by and large, the main choice. Women, children, occasionally also. They're the last hired, the first fired. They're the ones who absorb, that's why I call them a shock absorber, the instability built into capitalism. It's a horrible role. The only thing worse than assigning a group that role is then turning around, watching the damage it does to those people, and then blaming them. It's a little bit like blaming the victim of a sexual assault because her skirt was too short or her blouse was too tight. I mean, I thought we had gotten beyond it, but watching the hysterical playing out of yet more oppression of the African-American community really makes you wonder whether people can learn from their history or are forever condemned to repeat it. Yeah, and and now the most recent story is, you know, this is all Breonna Taylor's fault because she had the yeah. bad judgment to date, to previously date a guy and then break up with a guy who was involved in, in uh, dealing drugs, which is absurd. I mean, you know, it's it's absurd at, at every conceivable level. Uh, uh, it's, just, it's just absolutely breathtaking. So to what extent is it even possible to extract racism and 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 it's it's steps stepchild I, I suppose you'd call it uh, classism uh, correct me if I'm you know using a word poorly from capitalism in this country well I think you know, before answering I think the, the importance of the Citibank report is to let the, the white people of America know that to allow a system to so abuse our black brothers and sisters is extremely expensive for us However much it violates whatever Christian or other morality we pretend we have, or whatever ethics we believe we have, mistreating our fellow citizens is also a tremendous loss for us. So the only beneficiaries are the capitalist system because the whites don't protest the way they would in other countries because they have been exempted from this instability. What to do about it? Look, it's always been a simple issue if you face it. Give every citizen, white or black, male or female, a job. Give them a decent job. Give them a decent income. There's more than enough work that needs to be done. If the private capitalist sector can't do it, the government surely can. Uh, and that's what we ought to do. And if everybody had a job and had a secure income and could build their lives around those fundamentals, we would not be in the position of needing a repressive police force in the first place. So how do we do that during a pandemic? We have 45 seconds. We do it because it's even more urgent in the pandemic than it was before. That this notion of, of quote, going back to normal, this fantasy which we can't do, could at least lead us to understand, do something in the midst of this catastrophe so that you're at least ahead of the game and not going back to what you know led both to the failure to prepare, prepare for the pandemic and the failures of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and all the rest.